Well, good morning, church. Uh, we're excited this morning to get into uh, our series, our six-week series called Daring Faith. And this is the launch of that series. want to encourage you just to, just to be ready for God to do something uh, really significant during this, this series. I'm excited about this series because uh, sometimes when we get together, we, we, we dig deep into those theological truths and we learn this Bible knowledge. Or, or, or sometimes it's just like this word of exhortation and we're just super encouraged when we leave. Uh, I believe that this particular series— over the next six weeks, is going to be one of those series that just kind of gets down into your everyday, like moment by moment. This series is going to affect the decisions that you make, the way that you think throughout the week. I I am so excited for for this because I, I, I really believe that this series has the potential to just like change your life. Uh, it's just one of those series where, where we learn about daring faith, where this, the, the idea of, of having a faith in God that just impacts us and impacts those around us. And so we're excited to get into it uh, this morning. Uh, whether you're a veteran in the faith or you would consider yourself a rookie in the faith, uh, we are all on this pr- in this process of asking the Holy Spirit to, to build within us a life of faith. The kingdom of God, Holy Spirit, build within me a life of faith. And that's actually our title for this morning. It's Building a Life of Faith. We're going to cover a handful of different topics over the next six weeks. Today is Building a Life of Faith. Week two is Expecting the Best. Week three is, is Stretching Your Imagination. Uh, week four is Taking the Initiative. Week five is Facing Your Fears. And week six is Believing While You Are Waiting. Uh, if you would open up your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to uh, get our content from that great chapter of the Bible uh, this morning. Uh, while I was preparing uh, for this message, I kind of had uh, just this moment, like a, like a little movie scene moment that went through my mind. And I felt like the Lord just kind of dropped this in my heart uh, to, as a setup for our series. And so uh, I was just kind of daydreaming. I don't know what to call it. It was just kind of a little movie scene that I was watching in, in my head. And so I had this, this little moment where uh, I saw Jesus and, and this other person. I don't know if it was me, but I was close by. I was kind of checking out the moment. And, and they're up on this outlook. And and it was like one of those Lancaster County sunsets. You know what I'm talking about? Like the ones where the sun's just poking through and there's all these colors. And, and it was like uh, what I would call like the coolest sunset I, I've ever seen. And, and there's Jesus and this other person. And, and the other person looks up at Jesus and he's just like enjoying the moment. He's just, he's at peace. He's just confident. I mean, he's Jesus. You know, he's doing his thing, right? So, and, and, and this person with him just says, you know, thinking to himself like, he loves me. You know, he's He's God. He loves me. You know, maybe, hey Jesus, would you be willing to like tomorrow just recreate this moment? Uh, this is the coolest sunset I've ever seen. Could we like do it again tomorrow? Just the same sunset, uh, just me and you, like this moment. And and uh, and and Jesus is kind of leaning back and kind of leaning in a little bit, just checking out the sunset. And and he and he doesn't really make eye contact, but he kind of leans over and he and he says. Uh, no. Yeah, that's in the reaction. That was my reaction too. He goes, no. Okay. He says, that's not the nature of things. See, the sunset is designed to show you my glory. The, the, all of heaven declares my glory. I, I have things about me that I want to teach you tomorrow through tomorrow's sunset. And what I really want is for you to trust me that the beauty of this moment and the goodness of this moment and the trust that you feel in this moment, I want you to trust me for another moment just like that tomorrow, even if it looks different. See, I don't know how that hits you, but it hit me in, in just an interesting way because, because I like consistency and predictability, amen, in the house. Right? And I think when we start talking about daring faith, we have to realize that we have put helmets and safety belts on every part of our life, haven't we? On our finances, on our energy, on our, on, on our schedules, on our children. We just like it real safe, real predictable. And I actually think this, I think that as you seek the Lord, he actually leads you into a lifestyle of predictability and safety and peace. It's actually one of his goals. But there are moments where we have to be willing just to say, God, whatever you want, I will follow you with very little information. That's part of this daring faith. 
In fact, if you are, if you are in a season right now where, where things are good and they're, and they're safe and there's just favor and it's predictable and, and there's all this consistency, praise God. But you need to know this. If God would ever at one point or another want to shift you into a different place, into a different season, that safety and consistency, all that goodness that you're feeling actually becomes a trap that will cause you to miss the calling of God in your life. And we just have to be at a place where you're saying, Lord, whatever you want. Daring faith. He calls us to that sometimes. I believe that this series is going to stretch you. I want to I ask you a question right before we dive into our con- content this morning. I want to ask you this. Listen, would you be willing over the next six weeks to make some commitments to the Lord, to yourself, to the church? And just say, hey, you know what? I am going to dive into this content. I'm going to come ready to listen to the Holy Spirit, to let him bring encouragement, to let him bring correction. God, whatever you want, I'm willing to listen to you. Would you consider joining a small group over the next six weeks? We have groups that meet uh, all over the county, and, they, and they, they, they're open. They would love for you to join them. We have learned just through experience that processing things with a group of people is just so healthy. Or maybe you just find a person that you trust that you would want to meet up with for like an hour a week and just say, hey, I want to talk this through. I want to share with you what God is saying to me. You can still sign up. I want to encourage you to do that if you're looking for a small group. If you just go to our website, website, you can click the menu tab in the middle of of our website, and that will take you to a link that's called Petra Groups. You can click that, and there's a whole list of groups that are open and available. People who are saying, please come and join our groups. Would you please consider uh, doing that as we go through this series uh, over the next few weeks? Hebrews chapter 11, hopefully you're there. It's actually called the Hall of Fame of Faith. It's a, it's a chapter that's full of stories of people uh, who express faith in God. They believed God, they loved God, and they followed God. And their stories are pretty incredible. It's, it's a lot of fun just to read through the entire uh, chapter. We're going to get our content from there uh, this morning. And I, and, and I, I want to just talk about what does it mean to build a life of faith. What does that look like? What does it look like to, to allow the Holy Spirit to build this life of faith within uh, your heart? So number one, uh, faith is believing when I do not see. Faith is believing when I do not uh, see. Uh, you're going to catch a little bit of a theme here this morning, uh, just a little bit of a repeatable phrase. Uh, we're going to hear some stories about people in the Bible, and they had zero past experience, and they had nothing in their current circumstances that would influence their behavior or their thoughts or their actions other than God said so. Uh, They they had no data. They had no information. They had no experience in their past. They had nothing in their current circumstances that would really tell them, hey, go do the thing that you just did. Nothing was informing that except that God spoke a word. Uh, They're exciting stories. In fact, they're really exciting in our situation when they're over, (laughs) right? Because you get to see the whole story. But in the midst of it, it's like, man, to to hear what these people did through faith is absolutely uh, incredible. If you've ever started a business or maybe started a family or you've been in a ministry setting and you felt like you should pray for someone or or, or maybe um, you've had like a witnessing opportunity, it's this idea that, man, there's just something that happens. I get this nudge from the Holy Spirit and it informs my behavior. That's what it means when you have faith that is believing even though I don't see it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Any product, any company, any ministry, any school had to be seen in someone's vision. They had to have vision of something invisible, and then they had to walk it out to see it become uh, created. Uh, The world says that I have to uh, see it to believe it, but faith says that I believe it because he said so, and I know that I will see it. There is, a, there is someone speaking in my ear or something. I don't know what that is. Sorry. Did you hear that? Okay. It wasn't the Lord. It sounded very technical. I think it was Ron, which is close to the Lord. I... <laughs> Do you need me? Lester. Is it you? Yes. It's not to turn off my mic. That's why it sounded like the voice of the Lord. It was Lester. 
very close to the Holy Spirit. I just... You know, right now in my notes, I mention your name. That's crazy. You know, Petra was a vision that Pastor Lester and Irma had with a group of people so many years ago. Like, look around. We're not even on the main road. We're in the middle of a field. We're not like Garden Spot. We don't have like a, you know, $70,000 sign out on Main Street. Look what God's done. Just a vision. Just, just a word that influenced their behavior. They had nothing in their past that would have influenced their behavior that way. Nothing in the current circumstances that would have said, hey, this is a good idea. Go start a church in the middle of a field. A barn for the harvest where people can come and learn about the love of Jesus Christ. Look what he did. Just a word. Just faith. It's believing when I don't see it. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Probably one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is Gideon. Gideon is in Judges chapter 6. And I love this story because uh, there's nothing in Gideon's past experience and there's nothing in his current circumstances that would cause him to believe the word of the Lord that comes to him, but he does, and God does crazy things through his life. Gideon is hiding. Why? Because every single fall when it's harvest time, the warring nations around him systematically come through their area and steal everything. They've been doing this for years. And so everything that they've produced in the land, all of the baby calves and goats that were born, they just come through and they just tear off everything that they want from God's people. And so consistently this happens years, year after year. And Gideon is a part of the smallest tribe. He is the smallest and weakest in his clan. He is just not the person that you would pick. And the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. Most theologians believe that that is an Old Testament appearance of Jesus. And he looks at Gideon, and he says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon has no space for this comment. Nothing in his past experience and nothing in his current circumstances is telling him that A, God is with him, or B, that he's a mighty warrior. What do you do when God calls you something he's never called you before? What do you do when God says something to you that's not in your wheelhouse, but he drops vision in your heart. And Gideon believes God. He believes God. Nothing, nothing but the word of God. And he has faith and he walks it out. Faith is believing when you can't see it. It's trusting when you don't understand. Faith is this ability to obey when I don't understand. Have you ever had God ask you to do something that you didn't understand? He does that sometimes. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. But I really prefer to have all the information. Anyone else? I mean, isn't that wisdom that we would just have everything figured out. For those of you who make decisions, I think that's most of you. you know, <laughs> you'll get that later, it's okay. I, you know, there, there comes a point in time where you, just, you could, most times, even for really, really important decisions, you can't have all the information. You know what I'm talking about? Like, this is a really important decision. I, I have a lot of information, but I, but I can't have all of the information. And at some point, you just got to, just take a step of faith. And you have to believe. Faith is this idea of obeying even when I don't understand. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 7 and 8 talks about these two Bible characters, Noah and Abraham. In verse 7 it says, By faith Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. His story is in Genesis chapter 6 if you want to go back and Look at that. When you learn it as a kid, it's a really cool story, but when you look at it from an adult perspective, it's even more fascinating. Uh, Noah is in a landlocked country. There's no water around, and God tells him to build a boat, a really big boat that you can't move to where the water is. 
And then he says to him, it's going to rain and there's going to be a flood. Well, the Bible tells us that, that before that time happened, that first rain, that the earth watered itself from springs underground. So Noah is literally saying to God, what is rain? It's absolutely incredible that Noah would obey. It took him, it took him centuries to build this ark. The time, how many of you would have said, hey, don't invest your time, energy, and your money into that? What are you doing? This hobby is a little ridiculous, Noah. Your your family, what are you doing? Come on. And yet he believed God and he obeyed, and it saved his family and a whole bunch of animals. We have Abraham. It says this in verse 8. He says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. I want you just to picture that dinner table conversation. Come on. Looking at your spouse. Hey, we're going to pack up U-Haul. We're going south. Where to? Don't know. Are we moving there permanently? Absolutely. Where are we going again? Have no idea. That is incredible what he did. It's incredible what he did. He just packed up. He had nothing in his past that would, that would inform him this was a good, nothing in his current circumstances that said, yeah, this makes sense. All he had was a word from God, and he had faith, and he believed. It's, it's, like, that, it's like that whatever you want God faith. We, we do this with students sometimes where we'll say, we'll say, right up on the top of a piece of paper, you know, dear God, and then leave the middle blank, and at the bottom you just sign yes and let him fill out whatever he wants in between. Like, like are, you, are you there? You have to be there, right? That's what daring faith is. It says, God, whatever you want, send me wherever you want, ask me to do whatever you want, have me reach whoever you want. And, and sometimes he asks people to do crazy things. He often doesn't. He, a lot of times he asks us just to be faithful where we are. But to still have it all out on the table, to trust him completely, it's that like whatever you want kind of faith. That is daring faith. Number three, faith is giving when I don't have it. Faith is giving when I don't have it. There are times in life, in the life of a believer, that God will ask you to invest your time, your energy, and money into things that you have not previously intended. I was kind of proud of that line. I thought it was very palatable. Have you ever previously intended to invest your time, your energy, and money into something and God asked you to switch it up just a bit? Have you ever only had $20 and God said, now there's a priority in the kingdom and I need you to hand that off? That's faith. Have you ever come home as a tired parent and your children need you and the Holy Spirit is just saying, come on, I know you don't have it. Invest it anyway. You see, faith is giving when I don't have it. I know many of you have been in situations where, where you've saved money for certain things uh, that were personal and, and God came knocking on your door. And you have this, you have this principle in your life that, that, that informs your decision making. The principle is that uh, none of this is mine anyway. That, that it all comes from him and, I, and, and I, I don't really own anything. I'm just a steward. And so if he asks of me, it's, it's my responsibility to honor him with the things that he's given me. Hebrews chapter 11 says that by faith Abel, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. There was something about Abel's offering, man, that it was just, it wasn't the amount, it was the, the attitude. It, it was just this, this love that he had behind his offering. It's one thing to give when you have some to spare, it's another thing to give when you don't know where it's coming from. That is giving by faith. Number four, faith is persisting when I don't feel like it. Faith is persisting when I don't uh, feel like it. You know, our, our culture is just so feeling-oriented. Uh, we, we just fly off of our feelings. And here's the deal, and you know this, this is just so true, is that you will never get anything done if you wait until you feel like it to do it. How many of you know that's true? Right? You will never meet your fitness goals if you wait until you feel like working out to work out. 
You, you will never meet your academic goals if you wait to start studying until you feel like studying. Can I get an amen? This section right here? Okay, you guys. This doesn't happen that way. If we're driven by our feelings, how can we possibly be driven by the Spirit of God when he asks us to do daring things and in some cases difficult things? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 talks about Moses. It says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Uh, Moses had every reason to stay in the palace. Can you imagine the food? Can you imagine the wealth, the, the knowledge, the information, the comfort, the respect, the position, the pleasure? I mean, if he was driven by feeling, it was all there in Egypt. And with really not very much information from the past to inform his decisions and certainly nothing in his current circumstances that would cause him to act in this way, he leaves. Why? Because God said something to him. Because God said something. And he believed him. And he had this daring faith that rewrote the history of the world. It's incredible. People of faith cannot be governed by their feelings. We can't let our feelings orient uh, how we live our lives. We have to allow the word of God to speak to our hearts and let it fuel us to do the things that he's calling us to do in faith. Amen? Number five, faith is thanking God before I receive it. Faith is thanking God before I uh, receive it. Uh, thanking God for something that he did after he does it is called gratitude, but that is not called faith. Thanking God before he does it is called faith. And I, I want you to hear this. The Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, it says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. This is an incredible picture of God giving a clear word to his people of what he was going to do. He's like, look, you walk around this thing, I'm going to knock it down. And so silently they walk around this wall every day for seven days, and they don't make a noise, right? And then on the seventh day, they shout. What do they shout? It's a shout of praise. It's a shout of thanks. They're thanking God for the victory that he's about to give them. And when they shout to the Lord, the walls come down. It's just this daring faith is this idea of thanking God before I even receive it. If he gives me this clear word, I'm just going gonna, gonna to press into that, not with a heart of anxiety or worry or wondering, but no, a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. I'm going to thank him before it even happens. That is certainly daring faith. Number six, faith is trusting even if I don't get it. Faith is trusting even if I don't get it. This can be very stretching. I, I don't think that we, would, that we would have to travel very far in this room to hear some stories of people who uh, have experiences where it, it didn't quite pan out the way that you thought it would. Daring faith, real faith, is, is trusting. It, it's this idea of trusting even when it, I don't get it. It doesn't work out the way that I, I wanted to the Bible has a very special phrase for these people. It's kind of unique. It's a Hebrews chapter 11, verse 38. It says this. It says that the world was not worthy of them. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what they had been promised. This part of Hebrews is this section where he starts talking about people who who knew God, and they loved God, and they served God, and, and they just believed for the promise. And yet it didn't happen in their lifetime. In fact, it didn't happen until after they were gone. And so, and so they're looking down from heaven, and they're, and they're seeing their children and their children's children, and all these generations of people enjoying what they started. Because of their faith, because they stepped into something, God finished it. 
It's absolutely incredible. And the Bible says that, that the world isn't even worthy of these, these people. I was thinking about how to illustrate this, and I, I had a couple ideas, but two of them uh, were, you know, uh, my, my grandfathers, uh, they, they both loved God. They believed uh, in the Lord, and they, they started a tradition of faith in, in my family. Um, but they didn't know when they died that all three of my children love Jesus now. They didn't know that. None of them saw me preach up here. They don't know what I'm doing right now. They just believed. They just had faith. And look what God did with that. Uh, most, of the, most of the earth-shattering evangelists of the world went to really, really small churches. I think Billy Graham uh, grew up with a Sunday school class of five people. And it just makes you think about that Sunday school teacher who showed up every Sunday for five kids. And I don't know what their aspirations were. I don't know if this Sunday school teacher wished they could, like, you know, reach the world or, you know, be more effective or whatever. I think training Billy was probably a win. <laughs> and maybe they never even saw what he did. Maybe they passed before it ever happened. The world's not even worthy of people like that. Why? Because they believe. They say, I'm going to invest anyway. I'm going to show up anyway. And look what God did. I hope people like that got a glimpse of it while they were still alive. Could you imagine me like, I taught him about Noah? See that line right there? He got that from me. I'll let him have it, though. I don't need credit. They persisted. They were faithful, even when they didn't get in this lifetime, the things that they were promised. How do you build a life of faith? I want to give you two suggestions as we wrap up this morning of, of how you build a life of faith. The first is this. This is kind of an action step for us this weekend. Is The first thing is to memorize God's word. There's, there's just something about getting God's word into your heart and into your life. And as you, as you hear like the voice of God through his his word, and, and you memorize it, and, and it's in there. It starts to inform the way that you think and the way that you feel and the way that you act. The Bible says that in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, consequently, faith comes through hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. It's the idea of his word sinking deep down into who we are, Hearing his word and getting it in there, and that, that produces faith. The second one is this, is that faith is actually built through hardship and, and trial. Uh, First Peter talks about this in verse 7. He's speaking of trials, and he says, These have come, these trials have come, so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which, per, which, per, um, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. It's these trials, or, or maybe it's just a hard thing, right? Sometimes he asks us to confess, and it's hard. Sometimes he asks you to be a little bit more transparent with your spouse. Sometimes he asks you to forgive Sometimes he asks you to endure. God, I believe you. I, I believe you. I believe that your way is the best way. And I trust you. Even when it's difficult, I trust you. That is daring faith. If you'll stand with me this morning, I want to close our time together if the prayer ministers will make their way over to the side. As we were uh, preparing this morning and praying for you, we just had this thought of maybe there's someone here this morning and, and we're talking about this idea of having faith and, and, and you're searching and you're wondering what is this Jesus thing all about? What is this church thing all about? What is this faith thing all about? I, I, just, I just feel confident that there's someone here today and, and today's your day. To say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Take me and do with me whatever you want. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be new. I just need this off me. I need this old life to be gone, and I need, I need a fresh start. I was thinking this during worship. It's like, it's like it's the, 
when we talk about Jesus, you know, like forgiving our sins, it's like the ultimate redo. Do you ever do redos when you're a kid? I need a redo, redo. It's the ultimate redo. Just to take all this mess and, and allow him to wash it away. If that's you this morning, please come and get prayer. We would love to pray with you. Just as a word of encouragement, we had our high school retreat uh, last weekend. We had, we had two students give their heart to Jesus Christ. It's really cool. It was actually really powerful. Like, um, one of them said they felt the presence of God fill their heart. I heard God speak to me. He's moving, guys. He's moving. And if today is your day, don't miss it, please. If God is speaking to you, and I believe he's doing, I just think that he is just tweaking our hearts, man. He is just moving the chess pieces. And if there's a habit or, or, or if there's a, a sin pattern or, or if there's a distraction or, or, or whatever it is in your life, and he's, just, and he's just trying to position you, follow him. Be daring enough to follow him. It's kind of like that classic picture of the dad treading water in the pool with his hands up and the child slowly walking out to the diving board. It's hard to do that for a while, by the way. Come here, I got you. I'm scared. I know it's going to be awesome. Bow your heads with me, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you that you are trustworthy. Father, thank you that even if it takes the course of a lifetime, you just, you just keep asking, you keep inviting for us to trust you. You tread water with your arms up, and you say, come here, I have something new for you. And so, Father, we just surrender our lives to you. Lord, I ask that you would just take this series and that you would just do something so special with this time as we focus our attention upon you, as we listen to your Holy Spirit to teach us how to build a life of faith, that we would have daring faith, that whatever you want kind of faith. Father, I pray for your blessing and your favor to rest upon us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like prayer, please come and get prayer from our prayer ministers. Really excited to see you next week. Please come back. And if you could grab your communion things when you go, we'd appreciate that too. God bless you.